pull 360 degrees around the inner circle, it will touch again. So anything that fibers into a bunch of strands, oh. the strands will move around each other like circles, mm -hmm. right? But that tendency to wrap around each other would form this shape. No matter what, any two circles of same size rolling around each other trace out that shape if you pick one. Utilizing one point. single point, yep. yep. Okay. Okay, but what do we want to think of this curve as? The, that path that follows, what kind of path is it? Well, it's the inverse curve of the parabola. Oh. It's literally oh. the inverse curve of the parabola with the focus at the center of inversion. Okay, so now we have inverses of hyperbolas and inverses of parabolas, and this is the shape that makes hyperbolas and parabolas. So what's the inside going to look like that's holding this shape together? The spike doesn't keep going forever this way the more you zoom in. Right. It limits it negative two and positive two the whole picture. That's one thing to note. I'm not so... It, two and negative two, mm -hmm. that's just double one and negative one. We really care about our unit circles. Kind of interesting. This right. is a bifurcation structure, we, we're thinking. Okay? Yeah. So two would be an important number. But there's this spike way out here. Yeah. Let's click on the picture. Okay. okay. The, other than the main feature being that we have a cardioid, which we form by rolling one ball around another, yeah. we also have that sized ball sitting outside of it next to it. So one ball rolls around another and then we have the size of the ball that does the rolling right there. Yeah. And then this thing does itself repeating shape but it ends up making this next big, yeah. ball, this like, let's call it a vertex. Circle I'll put in between these bounds and the inversion of the circle, meaning you're using circle inversion to cross from inside and outside the circle like it's yeah. a mirror. That blue part maps to this blue part. This red part maps to that. Oh. This green part maps to that green part, right? So that's what we mean by inversion. And mm -hmm. if you let the circle go all the way to touch, then these will touch too. I'm going to assert this, that in between these boundaries, we have a limb escape maintained, the right. inversion curve, and we have two of these cardioids. Why? Well, when we put one cardioid in here, right. and if we put in a second cardioid there, yeah. And then we say, wait a second, my favorite cardioid is the Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set. Let's yeah. scale it to match perfectly right there now okay. to fit inside of our hyperbolic construction. Yeah. What does it look like? Oh. oh, that vertex becomes the focus, focus of, of this the side. So oh. you fill in this one, and both of those focuses now have internal constructive balance. You, you see what I mean? Symmetry happening here. This is leading in just a start of the conversation, but the point is we're noticing we can think of the internal construction of hyperbolic geometry itself as being maintained under these two kinds of balances, right? Yeah. And therefore, since we thought it was the trivial factor to begin with on the charge boundary, we're going to be looking at this constructed, the, literally the prime constructive anyway. We're always, already thinking that this is the prime geometry. So all the prime numbers are contained in the sequence.